Most people do not realize that the Bible is prophesied in the Bible. The actual book itself can be found in the Holy Scriptures. God has prophesied of this book. And because he has prophesied this book, and because it has his name on it, as you're going to see, this points us to there must be one specific book that he's talking about. I talk about this book over and over and over again in my videos. At the end of my videos, I'll say this book was prophesied of in Isaiah. So this is going to be a Bible study to really dig into and show you in context of how this book, the Bible, the Holy Bible, was prophesied in the book of Isaiah. I'm going to read through it, and it's important to read through the whole chapter to have an understanding of the context. Because if you take a couple verses out of context, you'll never fully grasp, and it'll never fully click for you, that this is talking about the Bible. You have to know what the surrounding context is, and once you understand that, it's all gonna fall into place. So first, let me read the passage from Isaiah 34, 16 about the actual Bible. And then I'm going to break down for you from the actual chapter why this is talking about the Bible and how you can know with 100% certainty this is talking about the Bible. So Isaiah 34, 16, I'm not sure if you've read it before. If you're new to this channel, uh, you might not have seen it before. Uh, if you're new to the Bible, you probably have not read it because a lot of people tend to avoid the prophets when they're first reading the Bible. But let's read it. So it says, Seek ye out of the book of the Lord, and read. No one of these shall fail, none shall want her mate. For my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath gathered them. And he hath cast the lot for them, and his hand hath divided it unto them by line. They shall possess it forever, from generation to generation shall they dwell therein. So this seems a little bit confusing when you read it, and we're going to go through it in context of the actual chapter. And once you actually go through it in the chapter itself and you start cross-referencing it throughout the Bible, you'll see how clear this is and how obvious this is. So let's start in the beginning of Isaiah 34. It says, Come near ye nations to hear, and hearken ye people. Let the earth hear, and all that is therein, the world and all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, and his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them, he hath delivered them to the slaughter. Their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their host shall fall down as the leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree. So this verse right here, this specifically happens in the book of Revelation. And the book of Revelation has not happened yet. This is a future prophecy. This happens in Revelation 6, 13 to 14. So I want you to look at this side by side with me with Isaiah 34, verse 4, with Revelation 6, 13 and 14. Now in context of Revelation 6, this is the sixth seal being opened. So it says in Isaiah 34, All the host of heaven shall be dissolved. And then if you go down a little bit, All their hosts shall fall down as a falling fig from the fig tree. Revelation 6, 13 says, And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And then it says, that here's, here's the confirmation that it's the same, same exact uh, event. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. Now look back in Isaiah 34, 4. The heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. So 100% this is talking about the same event and it's future prophecy. So this, what we're reading in Isaiah 34 has not happened yet. And that's important to understand. So this is a future prophecy. 
So let's go back to Isaiah 34 and keep reading, starting at verse 5. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea and upon the people of my curse to judgment. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For the Lord hath a sacrifice in Basra, and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. And the unicorns shall come down with them, and the bullocks with the bulls. And their land shall be soaked with blood, and their dust made fat with fatness. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance, and the year of recommences for the controversy of Zion. And we know that Jesus said in, in Luke that these things must be fulfilled, talking about the abomination of desolation, so that the, uh, the days of vengeance would be fulfilled, so the scriptures would be fulfilled. So the day of the Lord's vengeance. So we're definitely talking about something in the future. The abomination of desolation has not happened yet. And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, and the dust thereof into brimstone, and the land thereof shall become burning pitch. That's important to, to keep in mind, burning pitch. It shall not be quenched night nor day. The smoke thereof shall go up forever. From generation to generation it shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. So this actually happens in Revelation as well. So in verse 9 it said, The land thereof shall become burning pitch. And then right after that in verse 10, It shall not be quenched night nor day. The smoke thereof shall go up forever. And Revelation chapter 19 verse 3 Again they said, Alleluia, and her smoke rose up forever and ever. And whose smoke is that? That's the smoke of Babylon. Revelation chapter 18, verses 9 to 10 says, And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and have lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And the smoke goes up forever and ever, just like it says here in verse 10 of Isaiah 34. The smoke thereof shall go up forever. Now here is the, the key. There's already two places now where it matches with Revelation perfectly. But this part, it makes it 100% certain that this is a future event. This has not happened yet. And it's talking about, specifically, it makes it so impossible to miss. Uh, but if you don't, haven't studied prophecy and if you overread things that don't seem important to you, you won't get it. So in verse 11 of Isaiah 34, it says, But the cormorant and the bittern shall possess it. Talking about possessing that land that's burning forever and ever. So the cormorant and the bittern, these are birds. The owl also and the raven shall dwell in it. And he shall stretch out upon it the line of confusion and the stones of emptiness. They shall call the nobles thereof to the kingdom, but none shall be there, and all her princes shall be nothing. Now look how it says, uh, all her princes shall be nothing. That's just interesting, because that's talking about Babylon. That is also referred to as a her or a she in Revelation, the great whore. And thorns shall come up in her palaces, nettles and brambles, in the fortresses thereof. And it shall be an habitation of dragons, and a court for owls. These birds and the dragons are super important to understand the context of this, and we'll, we'll see that in a second. Verse 14, The wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the wild beasts of the island, and the satyr shall cry to his fellow, the screech owl also shall rest there, and find for herself a place of rest. There shall the great owl make her nest, and lay, and hatch, and gather under her shadow. There shall the vultures also be gathered, every one with her mate. Now, the vultures are gathered with her mate. So we're going to read this in context. I know in previous videos, uh, I've read other people's commentaries on this that would interpret it otherwise, but we're going to read this in context. And we're going to look at how this actually points the Bible with even more certainty. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord, and read, No one of these shall fail, none shall want her mate. So, that's talking about the vultures. The vultures also be gathered, every one with her mate. Verse 16, None shall want her mate, for my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit 
it hath gathered them. That them is talking about the birds in context. And he hath cast the lot for them, and his hand hath divided it unto them by line. I believe that's talking about Babylon, the kingdom, the burning forever, forever. They shall possess it forever. So all these birds will possess Babylon as it burns forever and ever. From generation to generation shall they dwell therein. And that obviously goes back to all those other previous verses. And habitation for dragons, a court for owls. They shall rest there, a place of rest. They shall possess it. They shall dwell in it. And then in verse 17, they shall, uh, from generation to generation, shall they dwell therein. This is talking about all those birds in the previous verses. So what's up with the birds? And how are they proof that this is talking about the Bible? Well, turn your Bible to Revelation 18 again. Revelation 18.2 is the key to understanding this chapter. Revelation 18.2, And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. So, what you just read in Revelation 18 is saying that Babylon will become the habitation, the dwelling place, the cage, the hold, where all these unclean birds will be. In Isaiah 34, you just read a list of seven unclean birds. Now, let's look at the proof of this. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 11, verses 13 to 17. And these are they which ye shall have an abomination among the fowls. They shall not be eaten. They are an abomination. The eagle, and the ossifrage, and the osprey, and the vulture, and the kite after his kind, every raven after his kind, and the owl, and the night hawk, and the cacao, and the hawk after his kind, and the little owl, and the cormorant, and the great owl. These birds are unclean birds. Seven of them are mentioned in Isaiah 34. The cormorant is in Leviticus 11:17. The bittern, which is also, uh, if you look it up, and for example, just look it up on Wikipedia, is the kite uh, in verse 14. The owl is in verse 16. The raven, verse 15. The screech owl, which is a really tiny owl, in verse 17. And the great owl in verse 17. And vultures in verse 14. All of these seven birds mentioned here in Isaiah 34 are unclean birds, pointing to Revelation 18.2 where Babylon will become a habitation for every unclean and hateful bird. And then you have things like satyrs, and dragons, and wild beasts of the desert. And back in Revelation 18 too, it says, this will become the habitation of devils. Dragons, satyrs, these are devils. And the hold of every foul spirit. So, this, Isaiah 34, is a prophecy that has not yet happened. The key to understanding it, is to understand that these birds are mentioned in Revelation 18. Now, there's another confirmation of this. It says, Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read, No one of these shall fail, none shall want her mate. So this prophecy is telling you that you will be able to look in the book of the Lord, and you will be able to see that nothing failed, that this happened exactly as God said it would. And that book must be available, that must be available in the end times, because it hasn't yet happened. So the Bible is saying that after these events happen, which is still in the future from us now, you will be able to seek it out in the book of the Lord and look for yourself that nothing failed. You will be able to verify for yourself this is exactly what God said would happen. Now, here is one of the most important things of all. Seek ye... Out of the book of the Lord. Who is the ye? Ye. Who, who are ye? Now ye in the King James Bible, as you probably already know, is the plural form of you. So it's talking about you, multiple people. Where thee, thou, thine is talking about you, singular, one person. Ye is talking about you, all you people. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord. Who is that ye pointing to? Is it pointing to the children of Israel? No. They're not mentioned anywhere in this chapter. Is it pointing to the dragons and the birds that are mentioned? I don't think so. Who is the ye talking about? Well, it actually says so in verse 1. It says, 
Come near ye nations to hear, and hearken ye people. Let the earth hear. That's the earth. That's everybody. And all that is therein, the world, and all things that come forth of it. Everything on planet earth. That's who it's talking to. This prophecy is telling the entire earth to seek out of the book of the Lord. The entire earth didn't have access to the Jewish scriptures in the Old Testament. But it does now. It's right here. The entire world has access to the Bible now. Now, I know there's some countries where it's banned and it's you'll be persecuted or killed if you have it, but it still has spread to the ends of the earth. God's word has gone out and has not returned void. And every country of this earth has received this book. And that is how you know. So this book itself, as Christians, will this book ever change? No, it's not going to change. No one's going to add a book to the Bible. The canon is closed. Christians all over the world, no matter what denomination, believe that. I know there's places in Ethiopia where they have a different amount of books. But for the most part, the majority of Christendom, this book is final. There's no adding to it. There's no taking away from it. There's no adding chapters. There's no taking away chapters. There's no adding books or taking away books. That canon is closed, and no one's going to change that. So this book is exactly what this is talking about in Isaiah 34. It says, Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. So this chapter is without a doubt talking about the Bible. And that's important to know because everything in our faith depends on this book. And it's important to know that God has had this book in mind from the beginning. It wasn't just meant to be original writings and then all put together and now we're just trying to figure out what it was in the original writings. It was meant to come together into one book. And if it was meant by God to come together into one book, God will make sure that book takes place with his own hands. So it wasn't preserved by man. God is the one who puts his name on the book. It's not called the book of the law, not even called the scriptures. It's called the book of the Lord. That's the name of God. All capital L-O-R-D means Jehovah in the Hebrew, has a tetragrammaton in Hebrew. That's his book with his own name on it. And if it has his name on it, it's going to be perfect. There's not going to be any errors in it. There's not going to be any mistakes. God doesn't make mistakes. And if he's prophesying of a book with his name on it, I guarantee you it doesn't have any mistakes in it. So where is that book today? It's not in all the modern versions. The modern versions say different things in almost every single book of the Bible in different places. Things that are the exact opposite. Even the New King James, which is supposed to be the, the modern version of the King James, it's not a modern version. It perverts it all over the place where it says different words, opposite meanings, it skews doctrines, and the other ones are worse by far. ESV and NIV, NASB, CSB. These modern versions are corrupting and are perverting the words of the living God. And if you want to take it as a light thing, you can, but I don't think God takes that as a light thing. God ends the entire Bible saying not to add or take away. So I'm making this video so that you can see for yourself. The Bible is prophesied in the Bible. God has promised this book to us from a long, long, long time ago. If anybody tries to tell you otherwise that this is not the word of God, that this is that we're missing books or the Apocrypha is supposed to be in this or something like that, no. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. That book is in our hands and that book is the King James Bible. This book will help you understand how God has sealed the King James Bible with his own name. So if you haven't gotten that yet, it's free on sealedbytheking.com. And if you have any questions, reach out to me and leave a comment. I pray that this study was a blessing to you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.
if you have any doubts on if the King James Bible is different than other Bibles, if there's any real good reasons as to why to use the King James over other Bibles, go to Appendix 4, 5, and 6 at the end of this book, and you will see how different Bibles are from the King James, and how they cannot possibly be the same Word of God, because every Word of God is in truth, and every Word of God is pure, and there's no possible way that God has inspired all of these versions. So, I encourage you to check that out in Appendix 4, 5, and 6. Sealed by the King.com. You can get it in print or in digital. Thanks, and I hope you have a great rest of your week. And may the Lord Jesus Christ bless you richly. May He alone get all the glory.